Okay, I'm going to be covering the Olympics in 3D, um, which is came from the fact that you know there's a lot of 3D movies out there. The coverage of the soccer in the UK is 3D. I thought it'd be kind of fun to try stills. Maybe some of the less dynamic sports will become a bit more lifelike. You know, we, we know that the, the finish of the 100 metres can be dramatic, but what would that sort of low angle finish picture look like in 3D where you've got the separations, you know, a real feel of being there, you know, trying to bring the atmosphere into the picture as much as anything. 3D photography is not new, it's the, it's the hardware to view it on with the 3D televisions. It's getting better and it's just an opportunity for us to kind of head that direction, you know, we don't, who knows where it's going to end up, you know, hopefully it'll be glassless TV viewing and, you know, we'll have caught the wave early enough. As the, the world moves from analogue magazines and newspapers to websites, people are looking for that added extra and I think that whether it's uh, 3D, 360 or even time lapse, it makes their website a little bit different from their rivals, so they're all looking for this and again looking to get the images to provide this. They want to come up with something that is more engaging, that will engage uh, their consumers for longer and in a more emotive way. Uh, and obviously some of the things that we're working on at the moment and have been developing and we're going to give them the tools to be able to do that. So it's exciting times. 360 uh, is something pretty special because it's not just a 360 panoramic view. It, you can go up, down, sideways. You can pull out pictures in the crowd, tag them to Facebook and, and give more sort of uh, a feeling that the person that's in that picture is, is part of the event. They can actually zoom in, for incredible high definition, to zoom in in real detail and pick themselves out and then be given an opportunity to tell people who they are. You also have sound that you can add to these photos. So we have panoramas that have uh, sound on them. Um, so, I mean, it's, it's a whole complete new experience, interactive experience for the viewer. I think 360 uh, gigapixels, 360 movies or spherical images uh, are here to stay now and they're, they're part of the media. We've been in the New York Times to the Sunday Times to uh, the Sun newspaper to Hello Magazine. On the Helicam side of things, um, I suppose our most notable job, which has been quite recent, is uh, video for Take That. It was um, just the, the aerial element of it. Um, we've done work for uh, Gillette, English Heritage, Britain's Got Talent. Well, time lapse, it's, uh, it, it, it's in between stills and video, and it allows um, someone on an iPad or a website to see an event in a minute. Parimatch used the time lapse that we did during the royal wedding in Monaco, and the tag was you can see the whole ceremony in one minute. It's also quite funny because obviously it accelerates the movements. Visually, very stunning. A lot of the things that we're working on are now in a position to deliver and talk to people about, enable people to get closer to their customers, to get more information from their customers, to give their customers more information, to understand a lot more about who their customers are, to understand a lot more about what their customers want. We sort of know that they will need this, but some of them don't know yet. And so it's all about um, showing them what is possible, what is out there, what technology offers them. Who would have dreamed that we'd be looking at newspapers on iPads five years ago? You know, iPads weren't even invented. So I do believe that, that us being at the forefront now will make a difference. 